Bill Burr's comedic persona is the loud, overconfident guy at the end of the bar. He fearlessly voices exactly what is on his mind, whether he is on daytime television or sitting across the table from you. However, Bill cannot be dismissed as this some blue collar yeah. loud mouth drunk. He is highly educated and will accurately expose your insecurities. Oh. These are some of the people who have been trolled, intimidated, and dismantled by the gab of Bill Burr, starting with Theo Vaughn, one of the sweetest and most beloved comedians who was robbed of his charm. In 2019, Theo Vaughn invited Bill to be on his This Past Weekend no, podcast. No, not my Theo. At this point in his career, Theo was just starting to become a household name. However, Bill wasn't very familiar with his material nor his fan base, which set the conversation off to a weird start. Theo was a huge fan of Bill and naturally started picking Bill's brain about the comedy and entertainment industry. So from the beginning, they established a hierarchy where Theo seems like an aspiring comic looking for advice. I was just like experienced like a ton of stress man burnt out you know i've been on the same tour for this hour for almost over a year now you gotta toughen up man yeah you're right huh you know what do i do camouflage you think? hat looking like a backwoods guy all tough and shit. you can't handle doing your hour again <laughs> i mean true. come on man suck it up Bill probably had a hard time Jesus. relating to Theo's mental health struggles since he grew up around blue-collar Boston men who worked themselves into an early grave. Then again, this was just harmless ball busting, but True. an early sign of what was about to come. I just think I have a tough time working with other people sometimes, you know? You know, I just think- Well, I'm I would say get over that. Get over yourself and get over that because there's a lot of great people in this business and you're gonna miss out. And uh, I don't know. No, you know what? I you'll totally say you'll, your loved ones will save money on the funeral costs because no one's gonna go, so there's not gonna be too many snacks they gotta put together. <laughs> <laughs> you could see Bill was about to be more serious with Theo, but then paused uh. and decided to defer to a silly joke that wouldn't last. She'd have a rough day and she'd come in. And I don't remember the whole show. I can explain it to you. Yeah, if I can explain it to okay. you. <laughs> I just ba I don't know what that is. All right. No, I believe I it. I'm not into it. I don't want to hear it. I got it. Your show. Go ahead. All right. Let's talk about old shows then. I we don't have. Chad, this is banter. Chad, guys, 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 guys. And if you have a good banter radar, you can kind of skim through it, like banter or not. That's more than just banter. This is just kind of weird. I'm, okay. Here's my here's my actual take. Okay, and then we can move on and watch the old video. Okay. Um, the vibes are off. One, two. I feel like Bill Burr is being defensive of, of his spot, right? And he's a newcomer is coming in, getting a lot of traction, and he's kind of like being patronizing, just because he feels like his spot is, uh, his stand anyway is like threatened in a certain way, and that's how you fight back. It is, I use this very often. This is a very common scenario. It is. You have to. You Patty made, Duke. What you about that? You made me feel like an asshole. Like that was the oh, 15th really time I. And brought it up. Bill is becoming increasingly agitated with him, but Theo is making a huge mistake here. Theo is known for his airheaded yet poetic thoughts about life. He also speaks exactly what is on his mind, but it feels like the intrusive thoughts of someone with more heart than brains. Theo keeps switching in and out of being serious and being funny, making it difficult for Bill to riff with him. Do you blame they him? They both can't decide when the other person is making a joke or being serious, and by the end, Theo felt defeated and Bill could sense it. What about uh, the nice guys? Mm -mm. Oh, you got to see that. I'll watch the nice guys. No, I don't know. I think you're, you're looking down. You got your no, jaw we'll out. It. You got your jaw out. It's very no. confrontation. I'm feeling like you're not liking my suggestions. I, you just like, you, you like the American... Uh, once I, upon a time in Hollywood, this guy's yeah. dead to me. He's dead to me. <laughs> this was like watching two guys having to hang out because their wives are friends. This is what it looks like that when you're too cool. All right, here's, not, here's, here's the, the, the analysis here. Theo tried multiple times to like lighten the mood and do something, and he was shut down too many times. And he gave up. It happens very also happens commonly. If you try too many times, a lot of times, and you get shut down a lot, at one point, like, okay, we're not gonna get out of this. And he just gave up, and that really sucks. It's it's incredibly difficult to get out of that. It's almost, in my opinion, impossible. I also I I judge streamers based on the fact are they able to get out of this or not. And the reality is, not a lot of people can friends meet for the first time and don't hit it off like you thought. Bill said he had a great time, but fans provided empathy for Theo since they know he is humble and vulnerable. They could tell he was disappointed with himself and Theo addressed the pod a few days later. He was he was Bill Burr to a T. He's brash, he's uh he's he's poignant, he's exactly, he's exact. Um you know, he's he he's really he really is like a like a NASA, you know, like a rocket you know and i'm more like sometimes like feel armstrong you know you find me just kind of moseying around on the moon 
you know, monitoring how I feel. You see, Bill only gets serious when you make what? him. Sometimes it's better to just sit back and let him beat you up a little bit. Like how Joe Rogan did after Bill absolutely dismantled him. I want people to walk down the street with a mask on? Let's not start this, Joe. Do you, though? Let's not start this. But before Rogan gets humbled by Bill, a quick word from our sponsor, Aura. Are you tired of receiving those spam calls from unknown numbers all day? I know I am. Let's start this bull I'm not gonna... I don't get called that much often. He's in a chat. We are watching Patrick CC, the victims of Bill Burr. Who's calling me? Ah, uh, good one, dude. I don't recognize the number. Oh my god, somebody has my number. Uh. Good one, dude. So funny. Oh my god, dude. Guys, guys. You know what sucks is that I'm gonna say it. Okay. I I take pride in like having no spam calls because I change phone numbers really often and they're really secret. So whenever my phone's leaked, it means that somebody at a company, somebody that works in a place leaked my number or like did something that they shouldn't be doing and that's illegal. And it, that really sucks. That means, that means that somebody out there is something illegal. That's really fucking annoying. Sit here with no medical degree, listening to you with no medical degree, with an American flag behind you, smoking a cigar, <laughs> acting like we know what's up. I just love how wearing a mask became like this f like soft thing that you were doing, like yeah, being courteous. Why? Is it what? I don't want to start this bull. I'm not going to sit here with no medical degree, listening to you with no medical degree, with an American flag behind you, smoking a cigar, <laughs> acting like we know what's up. I just love how wearing a mask became like this f like soft thing that you were doing, like yeah, being courteous, bitches. being courteous. Why is it for bitches? That, that was so stupid. A mask. <laughs> First of all, oh not... god, you're so tough with your f open nose and throat, <laughs> Chicho, and your five o'clock shadow. This is a man right here. A uh, man doesn't wear a mask. But this wasn't the only time Joe just gave up after Bill roasted him. Does it make you more aggressive? What? Elk. <laughs> no, Joe, you <laughs> lunatic. <laughs> huh. Huh. If somebody gets in my face, that might cause me to get more l lunatic. I eat a little bit of protein. You had to beat the f out of people for like three decades before you could like chill, smoke a little weed, put on your little rascal's hat, and just fucking chill out. You don't understand. I love him to death. And then just this up. guy is the most testosterone filled dude I've ever met. That's why I love him. I love him. Notice how Bill reaffirms that he loves Joe despite him being the butt of the joke. He often reminds people it's okay to laugh at themselves. Making fun is his way of showing love towards someone. A perfect example of this is hey, Bill's Alpha. endless jokes towards Colin. Yeah, Patrick sometimes overanalyzes certain things and he does and sometimes it kind of misses the mark. Not a lot of videos are like that. The only videos that I know of that do that. Howard, this one might be who hosted a sports radio show on ESPN. Him and Bill are great friends, which is why Colin knows to just laugh when Bill is sending shots his way. A lot of people think that uh, they're uncomfortable with my uh, my um, elevation. Are you uncomfortable with it? No, That's I just weird, see all of your insecurity. <laughs> <laughs> your giant go, desk. <laughs> when guys come and sit on the couch, I go right after him. Don't you respect me for that? No, I don't. Chat. You big <laughs> nah, dumb that's desk weird. hide behind No, that's weird. That's weird. I'm going to say it. Yo, this is just weird. Nobody should ever have a, a, a thing like this. Chat. Yeah, guys, it's just a very natural human thing to feel like you're under somebody when you're literally more elevated uh, or under them. That's just how it is. You, you can't fight that. It's a, it's a natural. Your microphone. You for and don't even think about asking Bill a dumb question. You're yeah. in your comedy prime right now. Like this is, you, you got about eight years left. How do you judge that? Because your energy level is high, you're, you're nimble. I mean, dude, hey, and what do you, what do you do? I'm not like an athlete. <laughs> I'm gonna blow out an Achilles and I can't write a joke anymore. Like I said, Colin knows how to laugh it off and remain in good spirits. But some people think Bill is actually the insecure one. Sometimes a harmless question is asked and Bill is the one who takes it the wrong way. Uh, Bill, you're, are you the head writer on the show or how do you, how do you work in the writer's room on the show? Because you write your stand-up specials, you know, obviously you're a writer, but you've never really written on a sitcom before if you go through your credits. You hadn't really been on a show before. Why'd you have to bring that up? 
just right out of the gate, he goes negative. <laughs> Never really saw you write on anything before, Bill. Um, <laughs> there was all these other nice things on your IMDb page I could have brought up, but I noticed this one glaring thing that you've never done. Sure, maybe the interviewer could have rephrased the question. No, this was bad. That, that, that wasn't bad at all. Guys, I didn't really sense the insecurity that much. That was more like, um, nah, that, that, that's fine. And two, how different is writing comedy on a show versus on stage? It was pretty clear this guy was not trying to offend him. The same thing can be said about this interviewer. Here in the Emily Fan Cave hanging out with actor comedian Bill Burr. I like that you said actor comedian. Well, you know, I usually go comedian actor. Look, <laughs> dude, if you saw my IMDB page, you'd definitely know it was, uh, it was comedian <laughs> actor. Yeah, it's a quick read. After all, Bill admits himself that he had a hard time understanding okay. people's intentions. Okay, that, okay, that, this time though, I'll agree with that. That was a little bit, that was defensive for no reason. Throughout his whole life, which usually led to anger or jokes. If someone was really nice. That was like a half joke. That, I don't think that, that was a full joke. That didn't, didn't feel like that. So I would just be like, get away from me. If someone was an asshole, it's like, oh, that seems familiar. For whatever reason, I don't like being complimented. Well, fortunately for Bill, he didn't have to worry about being complimented on this next one because he made enemies with the entire city of Philadelphia after they relentlessly booed him during his set. While Bill was developing as a comedian in the 90s and early 2000s, he gained some notoriety on Comedy Central Presents and through regular appearances in The Chappelle Show. But many attribute a large jump in Bill's popularity to the Opie and Anthony radio show where he's regularly been a guest over the years. In 2006, many Opie and Anthony show regulars were on the Traveling Virus comedy tour, such as Tracy Morgan, Bob Saget, Ralphie May, and Patrice O'Neill, to name a few. The tour was very successful, with the second show in the lineup breaking Jay Leno's record for the most tickets sold for a comedy show at New Jersey's PNC Bank Arts Center. However, the third show in Camden, New Jersey, just across the Delaware River from Philadelphia, didn't go nearly as well. The drunk and unruly Philly crowd on a hot afternoon outdoor show set the tone by booing the opening act off stage. They oh, continued to on. behave poorly and on the verge of booing the rest of the night. As those who had yet- Yo, fuck that crowd. That crowd's a bunch of piece of shit, didn't it? Guys, guys, guys. Booing an opening act is really fucked because opening acts chat aren't these like guest shows or like they're giving them a chance and it's kind of like you're warming up the audience for them because the audience is obviously going to be a little bit cold when you get there, right? Nobody's in like a joking mood. You kind of warm up the waters. You kind of warm up the, the fucking- that's how it is, right? So it's, it's, of course it's gonna be a harder job. You know it's harder. Booing them off is really fucking shitty. Yet to perform, we're dreading their set. Tracy Morgan gave up seven minutes into a 20 minute set. Bob Saget and Patrice O'Neill did well, but Bill wasn't having it with this crowd. He got defensive on behalf of his comedian friends, which led to an all out row session from the beginning. Oh fuck all you people. You know what, you fucking losers. I hope you all fucking die. And I hope the fucking Eagles never win the Super Bowl. Go Oh yeah, he wasn't coming <laughs> back. Let's talk about heart. Okay, GG, 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 GG. A drunken crowd and you make fun of their fucking uh, football team? Okay, GG. You, you can't come back from that. Disease. Something you're all gonna fucking die of and I'm gonna laugh at your fucking funerals. It's gonna be great. You're all gonna get fucking cancer, which is fantastic because all your fucking heads are shaved anyways. No one's even gonna notice. If you can believe it, it gets so much worse. Every minute that goes by, he decimates every possible thing about Philadelphia. He says if there was a terrorist attack on Philly, nobody would care. Rocky is your hero. The whole pride of your city is built around a guy who doesn't even exist. A man yeah, interrupts funny. from the crowd. <laughs> Bill responds. What do you have to say, sir? Never passed the fucking eighth grade. What brilliant shit are you gonna fucking tell me, huh? Go back to the dock and go unload some <laughs> warehouse working, weed smoking, <laughs> disappointment for your mother. Obviously, most people were offended, but others started to respect his determination to That's fight an entire funny. crowd of angry people. Seven minutes left! Seven mother minutes left! And I'm doing all f***ing seven! As the minutes count down, the insults progressively get more bleak, until the end where he says he wishes he had a weapon to use on every single person in the crowd, and in some backwards twist of fate, they loved it, and cheered for him as he quadrupled down on his hatred towards them while walking off stage. Uh, listen, I'm out of time. You guys, you guys were here, man. Thank you very much. All of you go f*** yourselves. You know, I guess I gotta get to him. He did pretty fucking good. Yeah, I... I gotta give him some props. Really good way out of that fucking situation. You guys were here, man. Thank you very much. All of you go f yourselves in your own ass. Have a good night. 
Bill single-handedly destroyed everything the city of Philadelphia loves, and they cheered for him as he left the stage. This rant made national headlines. Bill's fame leveled up immensely, but he claims it didn't help him sell more tickets. It definitely stamped his persona of being an unruly jerk with a short temper that will say literally anything nah, good job that is on his mind. In retrospect, Bill believes he was unprofessional and threw gas on the Philly crowd fire. He doesn't regret it, but he never wanted people to think that he is just a shock jock with a loud mouth. He spent the next decade proving to the world that he is actually an artistic comedian who is just a tad bit savage at times. And he did his best trying to be sensitive during his interview no with regrets, Ethan Klein, uh... but eventually he ran out of patience. Ethan Klein is one he, half of the eight. You know what? For sure he could have done it better. I think some of the jokes, chat, I think some of the, the early stage, guys, it's hard to hate. Because it worked like uh, on the early stage of coming into the jokes, though, right? Because like it was really, it was really raw and shit like that. Probably couldn't have done it better, but still, though. H3H3 I, 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 I could go on an hour Hila. about this. Ethan developed a reputation on YouTube over the years for being a hilarious wow. reaction channel. He created iconic skits and bits that are worthy of being considered YouTube. After the, the worm, fame. bro. In short, people thought he was funny. But while sitting across from a comic legend on the H3 podcast, Ethan was nervous. You know what I mean? Oh, if yeah, you, you know what, chat? You know what, chat? Guys, on the podcast, I guess, or the, 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 the interview, I literally said that, oh, you want content? Let's do that. I'm glad you guys always remember the worm because it proves my point. I was right. It's one of the only things that people remember of the thing is the worm. It warms my heart, dude. It proves me right. Yeah, it's kind of cringe. I look fucking brain dead. But at the time, it proves me right in every way I, I said I would. So you know, what, to, do I care? Comic Con of right. podcasting. Would you be nervous? Yes. All I'm right. Nervous well, you're, right. you're, well, you're, you're talking to a nervous I'm, guy. I'm, a ner I'm so neurotic. I am nervous. I'm nervous right now. Okay. Very nervous. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's going to help how do you... Despite this, Ethan remained pretty smooth for the first hour, but he would interrupt Bill a lot. I, don't know. I mean, you're right. You're really... You're, you're, I mean, um, he's doing this. I mean, how much... What does that do? You, need you got this sh kicked shit. out of your... Yeah, sure. For a while. So you, it's OCD. You're kind of looking... Oh, yours? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm not going to diagnose you. I have no idea. You could tell Bill was getting increasingly more frustrated when he would be trying to answer a question, then Ethan would just say, right, 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 right and try to finish his answer for him. However, things got really awkward when Ethan started pressing a question that Bill did not want to answer. It seems like you're in love with your daughter hearing you talk about her on the podcast. Jesus yep. Christ, well, you're pretty perceptive. You think you care <laughs> well, about your own I child. Well, listen. Uh, you also had a zillion kids, so I mean, yeah. Really? How many siblings many? do you have? I don't know, dude. The internet's too fucking weird to give out all that information. Oh, you don't uh, even want to say really? how many because you're afraid that it will yeah, not compromise means, your privacy. Yeah, by all means, keep talking about it. Is there anybody you can <laughs> cut this out? I'm honest, dude. Like, seriously? Yeah, no, dude. I, yeah, there's fucking lunatics out there. Okay. Well, off the air. Off the air. I'll tell you. Bro, why are they laughing? I don't get it. Wait, I feel like Ethan, guys, I'm not going to overanalyze it, but I feel like Ethan and Klein definitely know all the culture behind doxing and personal information and how much people can fucking go around, like, putting a piece over here, over there, over here, and then putting it all together really easily. I don't know why they didn't backtrack instantly out of this and just move on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I love how surprised he is. Jeez, well, you actually, can mention the amount. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> crazy people. Okay, okay. Yeah. If someone doesn't want to answer a question, a good podcaster would probably just skip right over it and move on. To give Ethan the benefit of the doubt, he was still pretty new to podcasting. Ethan clearly thought Bill's reasoning for not answering the question was silly, but some people genuinely take their privacy seriously. Ethan saying, geez, comes off extremely childish well, and will make- Yeah, well, uh, well, since we're overanalyzing everything today, um, Ethan is also like that. Everybody that's big on YouTube or Twitch or whatever are over of, uh, over uh, about their privacy. So they should instantly click on whenever they sense that from somebody else. Make someone with a short temper blow a fuse. Bill held it together for the most part, but his patience was running out. When you were getting booed by thousands oh God, of people I was, I was in Philly. You were, I was like, when you said uh, my favorite you YouTube video, I was like, oh God, not the Philly thing again. Mm -hmm. And then you did the Sherry's Berries. I was like, I love this podcast. <laughs> now I hate you. Oh no. I love, oh, what can I do? I love that. I'm joking. I'm f***ing with you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> but do you, but, but, but no. Bring a hat no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask were, you. I'm not gonna ask you. I'm not gonna ask you. You, you've talked about this a lot. It, probably more than the grape lady. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I didn't yes. realize. No, but I go ahead. Uh, let's well, do it. Well, let's now do it. I, I, I frankly, I like, you know, I, I, I like making you. It. I like making you uncomfortable. <laughs> Again, this subject was something Bill did not want to talk about, and when he called Ethan out on it, Ethan got defensive. Nevertheless, Bill talked about the Philly incident, and he wasn't happy about it. Well, I love that moment. 
I love everything you do. The great, great. This is how you turn it around. This is how you turn it around. Uh, where I made you uncomfortable. Now you fucking sit here and compliment me. Jesus, okay, so come on. Close. Okay. So close. What are you talking about? I had a great time. <laughs> I did too. I really did. I hope you did. I'm worried about you. I you, did. God, I, God, I'm playing way. it up. I'm playing it up. All right. But I'm playing, that, trying to be funny, but. Uh, this was just an hour of Bill Burr shattering Ethan's ego when an online joker meets a real comedian. This situation was very similar to the Theo Vaughn episode. On the surface, these awkward podcasts with Ethan and Theo seem harmless. Bill is just being himself and ends both pods saying he had a great time, but it negatively affected Ethan more than you'd imagine. Many oh. people called Ethan too sensitive. And after that episode with Bill Burr, I came home and I that's when I started taking antidepress antidepressants and I went to therapy. Wow. It was soul crushing. I just, it felt like a rock bottom for me because I, I was having a hard time with the podcast and interviews in general. And that for me was just kind of like the culmination of a lot of, a oh, lot of like, stress. And that this was a reality check considering all the people he had made fun of over the years. Guys, I'm not, I'm not gonna, guys, guys, this is like more mental health related. I'm not gonna make fun of it or make any comment about it. I, uh, it's, I think that's the point where we need to, that people need to stop, like, gonna stop there, right? Because it could be just, Guys, he's just saying that that's what happened, but it could be that he, had, he was already long in his mind and that was like the, the fucking drop that broke the camel's back. You don't know how much he's dealing with on the, on the back end, okay? This could be just a one thing that went above it and that caused that, right? He was just underlining that that was the thing that, the one that was too much, okay? So, because otherwise, chat, if you don't accept these as possible conclusions, then you're making a lot of assumptions on, on what somebody's mental is at, and I think that's just a bad thing to do overall to people. I think, I think nobody should, be in that spot years but ethan had bill back one year later and it went great however there was one time where it seemed like bill was the one who was genuinely uncomfortable around an interviewer a small production called southside steve tv on 100.5 rock radio interviewed bill in 2008 bill was immediately put off by the man's weird style and country attire so yeah i understand okay that that yeah he did it to me he did it to the people whatever guys guys uh, it's gonna be windy in the back check, guys. It's about to be my fan. My fan. I only have one left. It's over here. It's a... <sighs> Chat. It's not because somebody does something that you do it back to them, okay? I get it. It's a soy mentality because I don't want to be the big fighter and fucking punch back at people. Okay? There's some shit that I, if I don't really, I really disagree with. It. Even if somebody does it to me, I don't do it back to them. That, and that's fair and square. Straight up. Okay? Even though he might have done that or something, don't, I don't care. I don't do it back to him. There. Sizing him up immediately. Steve made a critical error, asking a comedian to tell a joke during an interview. So I figure I toss you a mic and you go. And I'm gonna do stand up in front of nine people in a radio station? No, I'm not doing that. Well, you're taking the fun you out of Southside Steve I'll take, TV. I'll take, uh, how about I give you five bucks and I wanna watch you line dance in your I'm a racist <laughs> I don't know how to line dance, dude. Okay. It's hard to tell whether Southside Steve is just a character or if he actually is just obnoxious and clueless. Yeah, this guy's not a racist. racist? <laughs> no, I'm not a racist. But Bill always makes sure to get a few jabs in. You know what he looks like? He looks like the first guy who gets his ass kicked in a Steven Seagal movie. <laughs> Bill jokingly said that this was the worst interview Chad. he has ever done. And in true Bill fashion, he did an interview years later and bonded with the man. That last video we did, a lot of people thought that like I was seriously upset with you. No. At least on YouTube. I can't believe that I there's more. Either. Morons on YouTube that didn't believe that I, I, I was having a good time. You think that we're not friends? You think we don't walk away from yeah. this and hug it out? I like exactly. this guy. Just because yeah. he has a NASCAR accent and I sound like some prick from Boston. Exactly. Doesn't mean we can't find a common ground. Yet despite all of Bill's roasts, jokes, laughing at people, I believe it. he hates when people make fun of comedians. Kill Tony is a live comedy show that takes place every week in Austin, Texas. The show is hosted by comedians Tony Hinchcliffe and Brian Redband, who invite a celebrity guest, which is typically famous comedians, to join their panel. The premise of the show is simple. Invite aspiring comedians on stage to do a one minute set, then roast them for how bad they are in front of a live crowd. For some people, it's their first time doing comedy. Others have been doing it for a few years. And as you can imagine, most of these sets are boring, unfunny, <laughs> like Chat, guys, guys, there's something about this picture. Time doing comedy. Others have been doing it for a few right. years. And as you can imagine. Here, I can chat. I think you look at this, you can almost, you can almost see exactly what the, what the energy is like in the room. I think, bro, I would not want to be this guy right now. Imagine most of these sets are boring, 
unfunny, lacking structure, and result in awkward, Shit. loud silences from the crowd. Everyone participating in the show understands the structure, and they look at it as constructive criticism for the comedian. Theoretically, it will make them better and let them develop thicker skin. However, when Bill came on the show, he wasn't familiar with the format, and after the first guest, he hated it. Yeah. Just compliment someone, put it in the context of a joke, and an idiot will make a fool of himself. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Ooh. Um, sorry. How much time do I have left? I don't... Wow, it's a really casual set for you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. He, he would have I mean, picked one guy. He would have done that. We were shitting on him. He thought it would work. It didn't work. Yeah. Like, fuck, this is fucking brutal. Is this going to yeah. be this? I don't want to do this to people. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's fucking horrible. Nobody can be funny in a fucking minute. It's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, it happens. It's fucking two seconds. Oh, it happens a lot. Jesse just uh, uh, took a real ah, nah, fuck there. Dude, 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 you don't even... Man, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> this is stupid. It's stupid. You're fine. You're fine. Bill quickly tried to console the guy and shifted the negativity and jokes towards Tony. Yeah, that's just a classic way. I feel like this is, he sees himself on stage, right? And he wouldn't want to, like, feel that. I think that's, like, that's pretty chad. Oh, yeah, Chad says, Chad, I agree with you guys now. Yeah, it's pretty chad. Because it's like, it's like, there's, like, levels of, like, expertise or whatever, right? And whether it's, like, medium people, she has somebody who's, like, lower. She, yeah, I get it. But since he's, like, I guess, a little bit above, like, an expert, you don't want to see that. Right? You don't want, it's just like, it just feels weird. Like, we all have something to work on, you know? So I don't know. So I, there's one more, and then I'm out. <laughs> all right? There's another one, mean, just to be fucking mean. I'm not doing this for fucking, trying to bring it up here. I love it's it. It's a show, Jesse, though. I get it. Uh, you did so bad, one of our guests is about to quit. Uh, I don't know what else to tell Oh, you. if there's oh. a negative lining. Okay, that was pretty funny. You know what? That was actually a funny line. This guy did pretty He's good. about to quit. Uh, I don't know what else to tell Oh, you. if there's oh. a negative lining, Tony will find it. There it is, right between the ray of sunshine. There's that little nugget of negativity. You f***ing c***. Yeah. Uh, smarmy f***ing c***. Then Bill was trying to give genuine advice to the comics. Uh, yeah, I would just say, just slow down a little bit. Okay. Just slow down a little bit, and uh, just the more you do your jokes, the more they'll come off natural. I would just slow down a little bit. Okay. Cool. That's it. That's not a threat. It's just. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but when one of the aspiring comics actually had a good. Yeah, I thought somebody was gonna just say, "Oh yeah, slow down the way down until you fucking stop," because your shit is garbage, dude. I thought. I thought, dude. It said, you know what? Bill decided I thought it to a good line. Jabs. Like, what's the government This dude's a fucking psycho, man. <laughs> this guy is gonna get his own show, and he's gonna be a fucking lunatic. Like, he has no remorse, no guilt, no fucking responsibility for your own actions. You're a fucking dirtbag, man. For the next hour, Bill barely said anything. You could tell he didn't like the format and just kind of sat painstakingly through the entire show. Now seven years later, Kill Tony is at its peak. They are more popular than ever and have had a broad range of massive celebrities come on, yet Bill Burr never returned. Although at times he is aggressive, intimidating, and quick to reveal uncomfortable truths, his jokes are a sign of showing love. He is actually a sensitive guy who just wants people to be the best version of themselves. You know what? It kind of gives him a shield, right? And a way out of like being defensive. When you're always making jokes and nobody can really tell if you're being serious or not, you can kind of play around that and use that to your advantage to where nobody really knows. So you can always defend and kind of be insecure without looking insecure. So it's kind of hard to make conclusions on whatever he is or not at a certain time. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, sometimes you can't tell though. I feel like there, there are some, I think there are some clips in there. That, that you could tell, but I think it's bad to overanalyze it. 